Hey, hey, you guys, welcome to another video. I'm Brad Taylor, and today I'm gonna to share with you guys how I like to maintenance my shocks. I'm not gonna lie to you, I see a lot of people get this wrong. So, without further ado, let's get on to the video. Yo, get up, first thing first, let's get these shocks off of the car. Now that the shocks are off of the car, as you can see, next up, let's get these springs and spring collars off of these shocks. Now that the shocks are off the car, what I like to do before I start taking off the shock caps is clean off any dirt or grime that can potentially get into the shocks. I don't want any of that stuff getting mixed in with the new fresh oils. Okay, shocks are all clean. Now let's start dumping <laughs> the oils out of the shocks. So what I like to do to protect the shock bodies from getting scratched up or damaged is I wrap it with a microfiber cloth and then I go to grab it with a pair of shock pliers so that I can go ahead, put a wrench in here, twist it, get the cap off and ready to go. This way we don't scratch up or damage our shock bodies. All right, so I got a water bottle, got my shock fluid, let's dump it under here and it actually stayed pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple pumps. Get out of there. Boom, clean. As you can see, I have a boo-boo, so I'm trying to not get any oils into there. So if you see me grabbing the shocks any weird way, this is why. <laughs> now, as you can see, my shocks weren't all that dirty, so I'm not gonna go ahead and take the time out and get a rag in here to clean this up. But if your shocks are dirty whatsoever, or if you're changing shock fluid viscosities, then I would definitely go ahead and grab a microfiber rag, stick it in there, twist it around a little bit, Get all that oil and dirt and grime out of there so that when you go to put your fresh oils in there, it doesn't contaminate it or make it feel all weird or anything like that. You want fresh oils and you want your oils clean when you go to replace them. Now when I fill up my shocks, I fill it up just below the rim here. The reason I don't fill it up all the way to the top yet is because when I go ahead and pump the shock up and get all of those air bubbles from underneath the shock piston, I don't want the shock to overflow and make a mess and get all over my hands and everything like that. So to avoid that, I don't fill it all the way to the top, I fill it just below the rim. Now the reason why you don't want any air bubbles inside your shocks is because first of all, you'll have less compression and you'll have too much rebound and they won't be as smooth. We're gonna fill up the shock body with the oil Pump it up just a couple times, or maybe three or four times. And then let it sit for a good five, 10 minutes, just until pretty much all of the air bubbles are out of the shocks. Hey, who blew this bubble? So. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and top off the shock body with oil and I want it to bubble over. I want more than enough oil because once I screw on the cap, it'll actually release a lot of the oil and the, over and the oil will just overflow and get out of there. And that way, you know, you have a, the right amount of shock oil inside your shock bodies. One hour later. And bubbles are gone. Okay, so I got the shock cap here and as you can see, the bleeder screw is still inside the cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and back this out. Okay, we're gonna take the cap, place it on top of the shock body. Try to square it up as nicely as we can. Screw it on. Okay, now what I like to do is grab a rag, wrap it around, grab it like that, and then just twist. I don't like using the shock pliers for this because it doesn't really need to be all that tight. Um, you'll find once you do that and then you want to replace your shock oils again or whatever you need to do to get the shock cap off, it'll be way too hard and uh, you'll have to apply so much pressure that it may damage the shock cap. So be careful of that. So what I'm going to do now is take the cloth, wrap it around the bleeder hole, just like so, try to give you guys a better idea. So there it is, the bleeder hole is right here and then we're going to just push up on the shock shaft. And I don't know if you see that, but the oil is starting to bleed out of that bleeder hole as I am pushing up. You wanna do this kind of slow and then hold that down and wipe off the excess oil. Take your bleeder screw, stick it into the bleeder hole, screw it down. 
with the shock shaft still fully compressed into the shock body. Okay, you're gonna tighten it. Don't over tighten it because then you'll strip it. Then what I do is I pump it. Pump it up. You got to pump it up. About six times. Three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go seven, eight. So that's our rebound right now. And 10 scale, we really don't want any rebound. If you're doing an e-buggy or something that's gonna be bashing outside, then you may want a little bit of rebound. But for my purposes, for what I do for indoor racing, um, really zero rebound is the way to go. This is where I see a lot of people make this mistake. They, they really get this wrong. They'll go ahead and bleed this now at their house. And they'll bleed this the second time right now. And um, that's not really the way you wanna do it. You wanna wait to do your second bleed until you're at the track. Because what'll happen is if you go to bleed it now, and you go to load up your RC cars into the car, or you're going to a hotel for a big race or whatever, it gives the shocks enough time to develop air inside there. And now when you get to the track, your shocks are full of air and they're not gonna perform the way they should. So what I do is I wait to bleed a second time until I get to the track. Once I get to the track, Yes, you're gonna be all anxious and you're gonna to wanna to get out under the track and have some fun, but just take the extra five to 10 minutes to go ahead and take the shocks off of the car, wherever you placed them, bleed it the second time, get all the air out of there, and then once you go ahead and get out there and get onto the track, your shocks will be performing the way they should. And the way I like to bleed the shock for the second time around is I actually just pump this up a few times, see where it rebounds, back out this bleeder screw once more, push the shock shaft back into the shock body, hold it there, take the bleeder screw, screw it back in there, and then you should have a completely dead shock. If you want rebound, then what you would do is you would still pump this up about 10 times, see where it falls, and then say you would want about a quarter inch of rebound, then you would just leave it there, then put the bleeder screw back inside the cap, and then that should be where your rebound should sit at. And there you have it. Not too difficult, but a lot of people just get this a little confused and everything, and I just wanted to clear it all up and give you guys the best way to build the shock so that you have optimum performance going out onto the track. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you learned something and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit bell notifications. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go. Peace out.